Rowan as they continue to create local and incredibly lovable institutions. My people, please welcome to the PK stage, Jen and Mike Cullick. We brought props, so give us a minute. Jeez. Hope, hope y'all are okay with this. Can't do everything at once. I might have tripped up the other night after an employee event and maybe hurt my foot. So. <laughs> That's for me. All right, we're, we're holding it together. All right. I think I think we're the only people here that brought like actual index cards. Everybody was so cool with their clipboards and their iPads. And we're not that cool. We are just so old school. Our magic happens <laughs> behind the bar. All right. Uh, um, go. Go. All right. I'm Jen Kulik, this is my husband Mike, and we're here to tell you about how we became an overnight success in 15 years. All right, so like most everybody else that's been up here on stage tonight, we moved here like 20 years ago. Uh, Jen and I met the old-fashioned way, in a bar, and she had a really low bar for me. I had to, uh, I had to have a car and a job and not live with my mom, and she let He me met in. the bill. <laughs> and our overnight success, first and only, here's our City Paper Award, Best New Bar, 2004. Thank you, City Paper and people of Charleston. Here's our West Ashley Award for serving our community. We made this West Ashley better by opening a bar. <laughs> All right, so we got an opportunity to pitch this thing that we wanted to turn into voodoo with a bunch of other people. Uh, but, of course, we had just bought a house. We had taken this dream vacation to San Francisco, like to do research, and um, we had a lot of great ideas, but no money at all. So, where are we at here? So, Jen gets this phone call <laughs> one night at work. Oh, yeah. And so, the phone call says, hey, okay, so I'm giving you the keys in two weeks, right? That's what I was told. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm like, do we, I mean, do we have any money? No, we don't have any money. And we have how much time? Like, 30 days at the most. And we're going to turn this punk rock shithole pizzeria into, like, a tiki bar somehow. Yes. So, like, you see the pictures. Yeah. We had, we had, I had to find $10,000, number one, that I promised I had. And then we also had to give notice at our jobs. And we had 30 days. But we pulled it off, and then we thought everything that we ever touched would turn to gold. So we opened this place. You know, it was based on a brunch that we did at Voodoo that some of you went to upon a time. And I was like, we're going to do this brunch concept, nine to three, five days a week, one staff. It's going to be amazing. And that's not really what happened. What, so what happened was we <laughs> started with a nine to three, five day a week, one menu, one staff concept. And we turned it into a seven day a week, four menu, two staffs, AM, PM, selling beignets at the effing farmer's market and not making a single dollar. So this is what we really need to do, right? Like, Voodoo is successful, so we're going to make a bar. And we went to this awesome sushi bar in San Francisco, cool as hell. And we're like, that's what we're going to do. So we get Doug Panzone to come and paint this awesome mural. <laughs> and we got sake out the wazoo. But what do we make? And I'm going to make sushi. And I don't know how to make sushi. Yeah. Or noodles. Which is what we did. And everybody hates it. Yeah. So... <laughs> Lessons to this point is truly, like, stay true to yourself in your original, like, it, like, thought process and your gut, which is obviously what we didn't do with Marie Laveau's Uni Bar. Right, so real life sneaks up on us and things happen, right? Thing number one. Yeah, thing number one, baby, you see that. Thing number two, Mike gets canned from Voodoo by our bar right. manager, I go Caroline. Back to, I go back to work after two months off, and I'm grumpy, and I'm like, rah, 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 rah. and my bar manager looks at me, and she's like, hey, cool, like, like um, we got this, man, like, beat it. <laughs> and she fired me, and we didn't so, have a job anymore. All right, so enter the moose, as y'all see. 
Opportunity knocks, we're unemployed, we have a six-year-old, we don't know, what, or a six-month-old, we don't know what to do. So we tore a half-built sandwich shop on Morrison Drive. Uh, a little public service announcement. If you suffer from postpartum depression, see your doctor, don't open a restaurant. Do not. <laughs> so once again, friends help us renovate this place. We, we have 90 days and we're like 50 grand at the most. So we mostly get that done. We get it done in about 90 days and we only spend about 75 grand. We miss why, it. <laughs> why we open this place up, and, and it's, uh, it's astonishing, except that... Um, well, I want you to see refer, refer to slide number nine, which was lessons learned, and if you notice the deli sandwiches, which that, was not initially what it was supposed that, to be. That sign's still there, yeah. by the way. And It's just uh, blocked out. <laughs> yeah, somebody comes in one day, and this lady, she orders a, a, a on, turkey babe. sandwich on lettuce. All right. And white so, bread. And, yeah, that was the end of that. Yeah. So, the, so the duck club <laughs> saves our lives. Yeah. Truly, as my thank you, and this, thanks to the city paper for telling everybody that we were selling that sandwich. <laughs> that was my dad said the sun shines even on a dog's ass every once in a while, and he would say that. So, so new menu comes right. Mike like makes this amazing new menu. Yelp is exploding. We're on the top. This guy calls us, right? and they're like, "Hey, do you want to be on television with Guy Fieri?" And and we're like, "Who?" And I'd ask my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and everybody's like, yes, you want to be on television with Guy Fieri. So the Guy effect is actually real. Like, he was an amazing guy. He was nice. He was, um, he was complimentary, and he gave me some great advice. I don't care what y'all think about him. He really is an amazing guy, and that's the truth. Um, he tells me to get extra staff, all this stuff. I'm like, whatever. I get a host, and I'm fucking weeded for, like, the next two months. But his, his real advice is to go out and do something, like brand ourselves, grow our business. And so we become real estate developers. We go to John's Island, and we try to have lunch one day, and there's no place to eat chicken so wings So we're like, well, beer. we need to make a place that has chicken wings, and why don't we just build it? <laughs> so we open this awesome restaurant, and we open an art artisanal butcher shop, because why wouldn't we do that, too? Once and again, refer to slide nine, lessons learned. Yeah, so, uh, meat house. <laughs> so now, where are we now? I brought home a 10-pound chihuahua, which Michael had no idea, and a restaurant number two and a half, the West Ashley Citadel Moose, that has just opened. This really wasn't planned. Michael wasn't really expecting it. Hey, we're going to open a brand new 5,000 like, hey, square foot this restaurant. Deal. These it's people are doing this great awesome. thing. Let's do it. So, <laughs> all right. So we just, well, we just want to say thank you, everybody. The community, we can't thank our staff enough, current, future, oh, Our friends, present, our family, people our who friends. helped us build these restaurants. Everybody out here. Yeah. Uh, thank you all so very, very much. Yeah. We really yeah. appreciate it. We really do. And we'll keep making french fries for as long as y'all keep showing up.